Hallelujah. <clears throat> this is a double portion again, Huhat Balak. And I'm going to share a brief summary, very brief summary of the parasha Kukat, and then a bit more on Balak. <clears throat> the problem of co corpse contamination arises in the aftermath of Korok's rebellion. This is Huhat, the statute or instruction that Adonai commanded. Take a cow, red, flawless, without blemish, etc. God's mysterious ways unfold as Israel obeys his statutes and cleans, cleanses the camp. Thirty-eight years pass as a new generation grows up, but grumbling about food and water continues. Moshe snaps and strikes the rock. A second round of kvetching kindles God's wrath. Poisonous vipers begin to bite and kill off more the, of the old guard. Adonai tells Moshe to craft a bronze serpent and lift it up on a pole. To survive, the people then must focus on the lifted up serpent, which of course reminds us of Christ lifted up. Hallelujah. Israel now marches toward the Yarden. In the Hof Torah today, Micah exhorts Israel to listen to the Lord and to remember the Tzikot Adonai. God's righteous acts and redemptive works that resulted in their salvation, both physical and spiritual. These included their deliverance from Egypt and the incident instigated by Balak, the king of Moab, and Balaam, the soothsayer prophet of Mesopotamia. The Israelites on their journey through the wilderness requested passage through Balak's land, as we read in the Torah reading. In opposition to God's people, the king called for Balaam, whose curses and incantations are known never to fail. He begs Balaam to curse the Israelites so that he might overcome them. In effect, he is challenging the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the eternal king. So en route to Balak, we find the famous account of Balaam's angry conversation with his donkey and his encounter with the angel of Adonai. We're all familiar with times Adonai may allow us to go ahead in our own designs and arrogance, contrary to the word. Anybody ever do that? <laughs> Thought so. But then he hems us in until we are forced to hear him. Hopefully, we learn those lessons and don't have to repeat them. So Balak takes Balaam to three different high places of sacrifice, from which he expects Balaam's curses will be pronounced upon Israel. However, they both find that Balaam cannot speak curses, only blessings, in accordance with God's will. Thus, Adonai had spoken to him in Numbers 22.20 and 22.35, speak only the word that I tell you. The first site Balak has taken is the high places of Baal, the idol representing physical and financial power. But rather than curse the Israelites, Balaam blesses their growth. The second site is the field of seers. This represents intellectual and spiritual prowess. Here, Balaam declares, God is with Israel and homage to the king is within him. God is their strength and shield, not the seers. The third location is the peak of Peor, a place of lawless immorality and carnality where they considered the human body on a level with animals. What did Balaam say here? Anybody know? Hmm? Yeah, Matovu. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, your encampments, O Israel. This, of course, is our Ma Tovu blessing we recite, we sing every Shabbat. And he's supposed to be cursing. Hallelujah. There is more, but I'll let our today's um, sermon reader take care of that. And uh, so, what do we bring our faithful, righteous God in return for his great gift of Yeshua and all the other blessings he bestows upon us? Words and actions of praise and thanksgiving? or words of complaint, like the Israelites. The prophet Micah declares that the Lord does not need countless animal sacrifices or rivers of oil to please him. Rather, he has shown us what is good and what he requires of us. 
Hallelujah. He has told you, humanity, what is good and what Adonai is seeking from you, only to practice justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Amen. I pray that we all continue to do that in every activity and circumstance of our lives, and by his grace we can. Amen.